Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse, and in this video I'm going to talk about isosceles triangles. Uh, now remember, isosceles triangles are triangles that have at least two sides that are congruent. And so uh, I have a couple examples of isosceles triangles right here. Now keep in mind this side is 1 3 quarters inches and this side is 1 3 quarter inches. Since these two sides have the same measure, that means that this is going to be an isosceles triangle. Uh, this guy is also an isosceles triangle because uh, these two sides have the same amount of tick marks. I have one tick mark here, one tick mark here. Since these two sides have the same number of tick marks, these two sides are going to be congruent to each other. So this is also an isosceles triangle. Now it says at least two sides are congruent. Uh, so that means we can have more than two sides are congruent to be an isosceles triangle. So let's say this also had one tick mark. Let's say one tick mark, one tick mark, one tick mark. So all three of these sides are congruent to each other. Is this still an isosceles triangle? Yes, it is, because it has at least two sides that are congruent. There's a better name for this triangle, which is an equilateral triangle, so that would actually be the best answer. So whenever we're talking about naming uh, triangles, it's best to name them uh, by the best name. And so an equilateral triangle is the best name for this. But technically, this is still an isosceles triangle, but we generally reserve uh, triangles that have two sides congruent to each other uh, to being uh, isosceles triangles. Triangles that have three sides congruent to each other, we're going to call that an equilateral triangle. And then this triangle right here is a special kind of isosceles triangle. This is uh, an isosceles right triangle. It's also known as a 45-45-90 triangle. Uh, and it's a, a special a right triangle that we, we mentioned later on in the school year. And so this is something to pay attention to on the very last slide. Uh, but here we go. There are parts of isosceles triangles that my students need to know. And likewise, you probably need to know. Uh, if we're talking about sides, we have legs and we have bases uh, on isosceles triangles. Uh, now, when I think of legs, I think of myself. I've got two legs, and, and my legs, I, I hope, are the same length. And so legs are, are the sides of the isosceles triangle that are congruent to each other. Uh, so this is a leg here, and this is a leg here. Uh, and if you're having a hard time remember that, just start drawing uh, the upper body uh, when it comes to people. And, uh, and you'll see here that this uh, side and this side are the same length, and that's generally what happens when people's legs. If you had um, a person down here, and you're looking here, this side is smaller than this one, so this leg is smaller than this one, so that just doesn't seem right to me. And so that's one way to help you out. And then the side that's not congruent to any other side is going to be the base. And so we have two legs in an isosceles triangle, and then we have one base uh, on an isosceles triangle. Now a lot of you might have thought, hey, base is the bottom, right? I mean, that's easy. Uh, well, not always. Just because the basement's the bottom level of, of some houses, it doesn't mean base is always going to be the bottom. Uh, and so, for example, let me draw uh, an, another isosceles triangle here. Let me change this up. So let me draw an isosceles triangle here. Uh, let me spin it a little bit. Give me a moment, please. And then let me say uh, that this side is congruent to this side. Uh, well, the legs are the sides that are congruent to each other. So this is a leg, and this is a leg. And then the base is the side that's not congruent to any other side. So this is the base in this case. So the base is in the right side here versus the base is on the bottom. The base can be on the top, it can be on the left, it can be in the top left corner. The base can be anywhere when it comes to triangles. It just depends on how the triangle is, is, is drawn. Uh, from, from sides, now we're moving to angles. Uh, if I look here, uh, we have base angles and we have vertex angle. Uh, this is a, a kind of a hint here. Base angles are the angles at opposite ends of the base. And so these two angles here uh, are the base angles. And something you need to know, base angles are always congruent to each other. For example, if this was a 70 degree angle, uh, then this would also be a 70 degree angle. Just something to think about. We'll talk more about this on the next slide. Uh, but base angles, you're always going to have two base angles because there's two angles at the end of the base. And then the vertex angle uh, is, there's only one of these, it's the, uh, the angle opposite the base. And so if I were to draw uh, a line going away from this side here, uh, this is going to be going towards the vertex angle. And so the vertex angle and base are always opposite of each other. And, and over here, uh, if I look at this guy here, uh, the base angles are the angles opposite the base, so, or sorry, at the opposite ends of the base. So these would be the base angles, uh, and then the vertex angle would be the, uh, the angle opposite the base. Uh, so just something to think about. Uh, moving on here, uh, it says side angle relationships in isosceles triangles. Uh, very special relationships when we're talking about sides and angles of isosceles triangles. Uh, this one here reads as, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So if two sides of a triangle are congruent, 
then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. Well, I've got the two sides here that are congruent right now because these each have one tick mark. And then it says the angles opposite those sides are congruent. And so the angles opposite those sides are congruent. And if you're not quite sure which uh, angles are opposite those sides, the tick marks actually point towards the angles that are congruent to each other. Uh, and so these two angles are equal to each other. For example, if this was a 70 degree angle, this would also be a 70 degree angle. Again, since the sides are equal in length, the angles opposite those sides have to be equal in measure as well. Uh, and so that's talking about the sides. If two sides are equal, then the angles opposite are equal. Well, uh, opposite down here, this is just talking about angles. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. What that means is, if I did not know these two sides were congruent, but I knew this angle was 70 degrees and this angle was 70 degrees, since I know these two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles would also be congruent. And so that's just something to mention here. Uh, now keep in mind here, these two angles are equal to each other. Uh, these are the base angles. Remember, base angles, you have two of them, and they're always going to be equal to each other. Uh, and so let's just keep that in mind. And then moving on here, we have an example problem. Uh, let me change colors here. It says, uh, example problem, find the missing angle measures. Well, first of all, I need to figure out what kind of triangle this is. Is this a scaling triangle, an isosceles triangle, or an equilateral triangle? Well, I've got one tick mark here and one tick mark here. So these have the same number of tick marks. So this is an isosceles, isosceles triangle. Uh, and since I know these two sides are congruent, then I know the angles opposite those sides have to be congruent. Uh, these are the base angles. And so since these two angles are congruent, if this guy's 35 here, then this is going to be a 35 degree angle as well. And then I know all three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I know all three of them equal 180 degrees, if I do 35 plus 35, that's 70. If I subtract the two angle measures that I have from 180, that gives me 110 degrees. So I know that angle B here has to be 110 degrees. And now let me, let me change course here. Uh, let me do something. Uh, let's say I did not know uh, these angle measures. And, and let's say I did not know that these angle, uh, angles uh, were congruent to each other. So let's say I only knew that this was 110 degrees. Is there a way to figure out what the other uh, angles are? Uh, if you know it's a ver sorry, if you know that's an isosceles triangle, then yes, you can figure out these two unknown angles. Uh, now keep in mind here, this angle is opposite the side that's not congruent to each other, so I know this is the base. If this is the base, then the two sides that are congruent to each other, uh, we know are legs. Well, since we know we have legs here, and we know the angles opposite those uh, sides are congruent to each other, that's important information here. So this is, since this is the base, this is the vertex angle. Uh, and so if this is the vertex angle, these are the base angles. And I know base angles are congruent to each other. And so in other words, these have to equal each other. Well, if I know this is 110, I can take 110 away from 180, and that leaves me 70 degrees. These two angles have to equal 70 degrees. Well, I know they're equal, so I can chop this in half, and that gives me 35 degrees. So that means that each of these angles have to be 35 degrees. So if you're ever given the vertex angle and you need to find the two base angles, subtract whatever the vertex angle is from 180 and chop that number in half, and you'll get the two base angles. So just something to think about. Now, that's the first step here. It says identify uh, the, the vertex angle or angles. Uh, now, there's only one vertex angle on isosceles triangle, so that's a little misleading. Uh, the vertex angle is the angle opposite the base or opposite the side that's not congruent to anything else. And so this guy here has to be the vertex angle, so that's angle B. Uh, identify the base angle or angles. Well, there's two base angles in an isosceles triangle. Those are the two angles that are congruent to each other. And so that's going to be um, the angle C and angle A. So angle C and angle A. And now moving on to the last bit here, we have an isosceles right triangle. Uh, very important. If you ever have a right triangle that you know is isosceles, uh, then you know uh, that the angles are always going to be two 45 degree angles and a 90 degree angle. Uh, so isosceles right triangles are also known as 45, 45, 90 triangles, and they're talking about the angles here. Uh, we talk about this later on in the school year, so this is something to think, think about. Now let's say I did not know these angles were 45 degree angles, but I did know this was an isosceles triangle. Well, if you know this is an isosceles triangle, and you know one of the angles is 90 degrees, you can automatically figure out what these other two angles are. 
Uh, and so if you know this is 90 degrees, uh, this is going to be the vertex angle because it's opposite the side that's not congruent to anything else. This is the base. These are the legs. And just like what I did in the previous uh, previous uh, slide here, if I know this is 90, I can figure out what these two angles are. If I take 180 degrees and I subtract 90 from it, that gets me 90 degrees. So these two angles have to equal 90 degrees. If I chop 90 in half, that gets me 45 degrees. And so uh, by default, these two angles are going to be 45 degrees. So if you ever have an isosceles triangle that you know is a right triangle, uh, you can automatically know that these two angles are always going to be 45 degrees. Anyways, hopefully this helps you uh, understand isosceles triangles a little bit better, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.